Good morning, everybody. Um, I think Beach Badminton looks fantastic. I don't know about anybody else. It looks like uh, uh, a great evolution for the game, which is an appropriate segue because our next section, uh, our next session today, is about the evolution of the game. We've got two fantastic guests here, and it will be your opportunity to ask questions of world-class players uh, and coaches. So our, our first guest uh, is someone who spent 12 years in, consecutively in the top three in badminton, was a multiple world finalist and a multiple winner of the All England. And our second guest is a double Olympic champion at London 2012 in the women's doubles uh, and also in the mixed doubles. So um, I'm going to start us off, but unlike yesterday with Alistair, I'm not going to talk for that long today. This is really about you and your opportunity to ask them questions. So when we talk about evolution, have a think about the different areas that have evolved in your sport. So that could be tactics, it could be about fitness and performance and science, it could be about commercial, broadcast, sponsorship, image rights, um, it, it could be about laws and rules. All these topics are open to you, so have a think. I'll get us started and then we'll come to the floor. Remember, when you get the microphone, wait, wait for the microphone, please. Hold it up nice and close to your chin and let us know who you are and where you're from today. Okay? So, without further ado, uh, I'm delighted to welcome uh, our guests for this session, Morten Frost, uh, Zhao Yunli, and translating for Yunli, Wei Wei. Please welcome. Tell we rehearsed that. So, um, Yunli, welcome. Morton, welcome. If you would like to share the microphone and, and we went, if you can translate for us. So, we finished yesterday with Alistair and we were talking about culture and we were talking about the environment uh, in which athletes uh, now grow up, train, and, and move on to performance. And you both come from different generations, I think it would be diplomatic to say, uh, within uh, badminton. But um, the senior partner in this, unfortunately, is, is, is you, Martin. Uh, you, you've been around longer. Talk to us about, when we think about the evolution of, of the sport, where, where you started in the sport and some of the, the resilience and single-mindedness that you, you had to show to get started. That's a big question. No? I don't know. It is. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame John for that. Sorry, John. Now it works. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for having me here. It's a great honor, and I will try to answer the questions as best as possible. And the one I've just got here is immense. It's really huge. So um, I can only say when I started playing when I was very young, as a junior in the 60s and 70s, which is way, way back. So 1960s and 70s, in case you Yes. And um, of course, uh, we didn't have the help of um, you know, associations and uh, clubs, that's what we see today. So it was very much fending for yourself. You were just doing it because you loved it. You were playing open tournaments, doing the best you could, and then go home and train some more. Um, later on, uh, in the 80s, when I uh, was uh, one of the best players in the world. Um, it was still the same in many ways. We were still kind of fending for ourselves, setting up our own training setups and, and uh, paying for the courts, paying for the shuffles, paying for everything ourselves. And then, of course, going to play tournaments where we, on occasions, had invitations to go to Jakarta, to go to Tokyo, and, and so on. Um, in the late 80s, and then starting in the 1990s, then suddenly all these um, national setups really, really started. And you saw strong setups in Jakarta, in, in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in China, in Korea, in Japan, and so forth. And of course, Denmark followed 
the same trend. And um, it has obviously been working really well, and as you can see, the, the, the game of badminton has evolved, got better and better every single day you watch it, and um, it's, it's a real pleasure to see that. Let's um, throw the same question to Yun Lee. Um, you uh, come from, uh, uh, I suppose, a culture within China that from, from the outside looking in probably seems quite uh, rigid, maybe, or um, very collective. Um, what, what was the environment for you when you started playing in China? Uh, in China, uh, we've got a uh, quite strict selection criteria. So you start from school, you got selected from school, then you go to the uh, provincial uh, uh, training center, and then well, junior national team, and so uh, national team. Mm -hmm. Uh, from 12 years old and she started with her professional training so she moved into the training center um, well in the morning they wake up at six o'clock and in the evening there's always a, like a curfew you have to mm. uh, yeah turn off the light <laughs> 10 o'clock <laughs> 就是呃，团队的话有点像部队，就是军事化的。Yeah, so um, so the collective work is more less like a uh, military style. 嗯哼。呃，就会一在一起选拔，比如说五十个人，然后就一起的学习，然后训练这样子。So we're like fifty of them. So they 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 study together and they practice together. 嗯，统一管理嘛。so they, uh, they are managed by the uh, provincial team. And, and has that, have you noticed since you started to now, what, what has changed in, in China? How has that um, culture developed? Um, 可能大浪淘沙出来的只有一些很少量的人，但是在这个过程当中，我觉得我们嗯有一些更先进的理念，包括原来只是一个教练，然后管所有的那个，现在就很多一个体能啊、课龄啊、各个的老师这样子去做。
broadcast is obviously one of the areas in which you're more, more recently involved in the sport. How important has the development of broadcast and the, the, digital, the change to digital uh, been for the sport of badminton? I think it's huge. I think possibly one of the biggest things when, when we got into the Olympics in uh, 1992 and then from there more and more money was poured into the sport. It's of course helped a lot and then the new um, the new age of, of TV, we get more and more coverage, uh, more and more personalities, uh, the sport is on everywhere in the world if you want to watch it and uh, I think that's really good for the sport. One of the byproducts, of course, of, of extra broadcast is, is about the image of the sport I, and I noticed if you go back to one of your early appearances at the All England Championships uh, in 1980, the uh, title sponsor of the All England that year was John Clare. Does, it, does anybody remember John Clare? You're all too young. Oh, there's one at the back. He's happy to put his hand up. John Clare was a brand of cigarettes uh, in the UK. Uh, they were the title sponsor of the championships that year. And your own personal sponsor was? Carlsberg. Carlsberg. So there we go. So the image of the sport has certainly moved, moved on in, 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 quite a lot. in that time. The, <clears throat> the commercial conversation around sport, um, and particularly around athletes' images, is, is, uh, is a politically... A difficult one for a lot of sports. Badminton, we, we talk, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the Chinese model again, but badminton is, is, still seems very tied to the national associations in a way that maybe professional golf or professional tennis isn't, where individuals are, are, are much more in charge of their own situations. Um, do you see that? Do you see your sport moving in that direction now? I, I definitely do. I, I really think that badminton has moved along rapidly over let's say five, ten years. A lot of things has happened and I think in, in the future, perhaps not in the near near future, but in the future I can see that a lot of players will go more independent. If, if we look at Malaysia, if we look at Indonesia, um, lots of places, players are going independent and say I, I don't want to be in the national setup anymore, I want to do it my own way. And uh, we see that more and more, and I think that's something that we will see in the future, that the uh, national associations' set-ups will not be as strong as what we've seen over the past 20 years or so. Uh, and do you think the same applies to China, where obviously the national association is, is quite a powerful body? Uh, Lin Dan, to some extent, has tried to kind of break away a little bit and become more independent. Um, has that been successful? Do you see any changes coming uh, in China in that respect? Uh, 所以中国的团队也是现在就把这个项目可能放在成绩或者说队伍的影响就是放在项目影响没有说像以前就是完全没有没有这个 As diplomatically as you can, we win. It's <laughs> okay. Um, we're just transit for a spot because it's a bit long. It's okay. Um, so it's been a big change because um, before players were just or were told what to do now um, the management is taking care of how as a player uh, more all, all around how they develop as Ling Dan is not only a athlete anymore he has got some he promote he's kind of he has got his own brand so yeah. he promotes himself differently so so association is more relaxed in this term just to um, to be more um, taking care of how he feels, you know, how, as a on the market he how he promotes and so so the association and the way they look at badminton is different now because before they were thinking the medals, the results, the most important. Whereas now they are thinking badminton as a sport, they look at a bigger picture, 
how they develop uh, badminton in China and how to make this a sports more popular. Yeah, so that's, that's about participation and participation that's and fine. numbers bring, bring success. Right, let's go to the floor. Um, uh, somebody must have a question nice and early. Gentleman at the back who... Uh Hi, uh, I'm Alan McElveen, I'm from Hungary. Uh, the question is, the changes in the Chinese culture and the way they are thinking about it, is that because of the westernization coming into China that children have more opportunities to do many different things and so the association has to treat them differently than they did before. So I suppose that's a yeah, liberalization of opportunity, I think. And中国的一些变化是因为就是因为跟西化了就是比较西化社会西化的影响因为我觉得现在可能就是在网络上还有比较那个就它的影响是因为就是西方我们常在的一些对我觉得是整体上可能原来呃羽毛球是亚洲比
um, was you talked about the influence that other players had on you in, in, in raising your levels, and in particular uh, uh, Prakash Padakoni, who, who visited you in Denmark and who you credit with, with taking your game to, to another level. Does that sort of sparring between the top athletes still happen, or is there now too much at stake, or is it, is it too competitive? <laughs> Um, I think it's still happening, but uh, of course this was a unique example of uh, Prakash moving to, to Denmark, stayed in Denmark for five years. We trained together every single day and uh, I am ever so grateful because he was elevating uh, my play and I, I got to where I got to based on the fact that we could spar every single day, so I say thank you so much. <laughs> um, if you're watching. <laughs> if you're watching, I'm sure you're watching somewhere. Um, I also would like to say, I think it's a very good point from uh, Sergeant Lay, saying that um, um, players need to learn to train as and when they are away on playing tournaments. Um, in the past there were not so many tournaments, so it was going out, coming back home, doing some training, then going out again and so on. Now they play almost uh, 52 weeks a year and they need to learn to practice and practice well during as and when travelling. And I think that's one of the big changes as well. And it uh, requires a lot of focus from the coaches as well to make sure as and when a player has lost in the tournament that they still carry on doing their training and then get ready for the next tournament the next week. Uh, Inley mentioned about globalisation of the sport and the, the schedule presumably uh, it's a challenge now for, for, for modern players managing their time, their diet when they're on the road as well. It's not like they can crash back to the hotel, have a microwave meal and you know go to bed. You've got to be thinking constantly on the road about how you're looking after yourself when you're training. Um, is, is that a, a challenge for modern players now, the schedule of events? Uh,就是平时,就是在在管理上面,就是有没有就是说有什么变化,就是因为你一会儿,因为你要讲有,呃,营养啊,那些要注意营养,但是他每次都是比赛之间有很短,经常在国外,这个是你们是怎么样去处
So strength and conditioning coaches, nutritionists, sports psychologists, back-to-back tournaments, do you bring them along? How much do you do when you're in competition mode? You can have that one. I can have that one. <laughs> um, for, for the major team events, I think um, the team, the support team, is a lot, lot bigger. When uh, players are playing normal open events during the year, uh, having all these uh, support people to, to follow them around the world is probably a bit too expensive. Uh, some teams can afford it, but other teams cannot. If we go back to Denmark, where I come from, uh, usually it's one or two coaches following the team. If they're very lucky, they have a physio to follow them as well. But apart from that, if you look at the Chinese team, the Japanese team and so on, the support team to the players is so much greater. So, um, again, there's a, there's a big difference and uh, in Denmark you are more or less uh, defending for yourself. You have to work it out, you have to find your own solutions. I don't know if that makes sense. We'll, we'll move straight on to the next question, so you have the microphone. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Toby from Germany, and also a question to uh, both of you. Are there any players, uh, active players at the moment, that really changed the game in your in your eyes? That really elevated, uh, like any discipline, to another level. Let's start with you, Mike. In judo, Chinese judo, regardless of any level, 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 any 那我觉得可能一种打法或者一种风格，它会影响一个时期。嗯、uh, ，so not only one player that changes everything, but it's a, it's kind of style of playing that changes that probably during this period of time, it's uh, that changes the match of badminton in particular events. 就是某一个项目用双打来说，他可能会因为哪几个组合的队员他的打法，然后去影响这个时期的整个水平的高低。So there,、uh, there are a couple of, um, what should give the example of of、uh, the doubles players, and there could be a couple of play,、um, doubles they have similar styles. So that will because when playing against them, you need to adapt with the with the.、Um, Strategy or tactics, so that type of style will uh, will uh, become a trend of this age or this ten years. Or there isn't a particular partnership, doubles partnership that, that you know, can think of that led the way to changing the style. Is there a particular pair? There's no need for false modesty as well. If, if, if she's one of them, that's fine. You know, one team is very representative. One team, they have got the team. 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 Quickly to you, let's let's focus maybe on singles. In your case, was was there a player that, that really stood out to you over the course of your career, both as a player and, and then as a coach in broadcasting? I met a lot of players. I've seen a lot, and、uh, I think they've all been brilliant.、Um, but I think it's it's always when you get a rivalry between two players, three players, four players. You see, the women's singles at the moment is, is extremely competitive, and and we're all looking forward to watching the women's singles because. We know we, we we can't guess who's going to win. It's it's so competitive, and when you look at the rivalry between、uh, Li Chengwei and of course Lin Dan, then that's what people are looking forward to. So as soon as you have these kind of rivalries, that's when the、uh, the game is kind of、uh, developing. Yeah, certainly you can see that in tennis as well as、so, uh, yeah, it's still yeah, you see that as well. But I'd like to f- add on to just one thing that you you asked whether the support people and all that. I think what will happen is that、uh, in the future. Players are earning more and more money, and chances are they're setting up their own setups, and perhaps their support system will get stronger. And that means that maybe a fisher will follow、uh, the player, maybe a doctor will follow the player, and so on. The more money that comes into it, the more they're looking to set up their own setups. 
Good. Um, we, uh, in the last 30 seconds, so let's make it two really quick ones over here. Sir? I'm John from uh, Singapore. I just want to ask uh, regarding the evolution of the surf. We move from the singles, we normally do the high surf, and uh, then now the guys are doing more low surfs, but the girls are still doing the high, but gradually moving to low surf as one. Uh, and the other one is the service, uh, those are double service. Uh, you may probably, if I really admire the surf because she plays both mixed doubles and ladies doubles, and uh, she's very cool composure. Maybe she can give us some hints and tips on how she go through her mind during the service for doubles. Let, let's start with that then. The, the, the mindset of, of going through service, I'm not sure if there was a question there rather than just adoration, but <laughs> um, an, an, an admirer of your calmness and control um, uh, on self, um, maybe you'd like to... 因为为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么你会为什么
And if that happens, and then possibly unsentenced and after him, then of course you can easily see that we are spread around the world uh, in, in a second. But I think that when you, when you look at uh, Malaysia, they have a lot of independent players. They're setting up their own systems. Uh, Indonesia's doing the same. Korea's doing the same and so on. I think there's a lot of things happening now where players want to break free of, uh, of these systems and want to try to do it on their own because they feel that they might be better off that way. And um, only time can tell. But I think the biggest issue here is money. Money, 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 money talks. And if you've got the money and you feel that you want to have your own coach, your coach, who's only looking after you, I can understand that. So I think it's moving that way, whatever way we're looking at it. Uh, it's a meaty conversation for you all over coffee. Um, we really must stop or you're going to get a very short lunch break, I can promise you that. Um, could you please give you a very warm uh, thanks uh, to Will Webb.